Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from my second junior Black and Mouse Olympia team selection test back in 2013, problem number two. I suggest you try this nice problem out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 40 to an hour and a half, not more than three hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next, you know, 10 to 20 minutes. Like put your first ideas out on paper. How would you deal with this inequality? taking into account that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is free and these are positive real numbers. Pause now and I hope you've paused. So the first sort of idea is, well, we need to prove this direction of inequality. And what do we have? We have like a over 3c, a squared minus ab plus b squared. Now, one way of thinking about this is, what do I have here? I have here something like a squared and b squared minus ab. Now this thing, only this, is greater than or equal to something. So something over that is less than or equal to something. So it makes sense to try out to estimate a squared minus ab plus b squared is greater than or equal to ab by the a and gm or by just like moving this over here and having a minus b squared greater than or equal to zero we know this to be true and so we know that one over a b is greater than or equal to one over a squared minus a b plus b squared and now when we multiply it by a over 3c we get a over 3abc is greater than or equal to a over a squared minus b a plus b squared times free c. And now, what is cool about this estimate? I invite you to pause for two minutes and ask yourself, why is this estimate cool? And the answer why this estimate is cool, though coolness is in the eye of the beholder, is because if I apply to every single one of these, I'll get something that looks like, I'll get that this expression, call it uh, the left hand side, so let's call it L. We'll get that L is less than or equal to A over 3ABC plus B over 3ABC plus C over 3ABC. Now what's very, very cool about this is we're getting something over ABC at every point at every turn, so this is equal to a plus b plus c over free abc. And what we're left to prove is that this is less than or equal to one over abc. And this seems, one, it seems nice, and two, it's like, let's try this out. But I, the reason I really, really like this is because I have the same thing in the denominator in every single one of these, and then I can combine them. And then this is easier to estimate. We can, it's easier for us to try to prove that this is less than this than to multiply everything through here. Now, it might be that this inequality is too strong, but let's check this out. And I invite you to pause for another 10 minutes and try to check it out. See if you can prove that this is greater than or equal to this. And here's the next step. Well, this is greater than or equal to this, if and only if, when you multiply it everything through by free abc if and only if a plus b plus c is less than or equal to free okay can we prove this in any way shape or form we still haven't used our condition that a squared plus b squared plus c squared is equal to free so maybe there's a way to use this condition now to prove this and the answer is well this isn't going to be homogeneous if I just write 3 is equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared. But to make it homogeneous, I can square it first, and I'll get, I'll get a plus b plus c squared needs to be less than or equal to 9, just needs to be less than or equal to 9. And now this 9 I can write as 3 times a squared plus b squared plus c squared, right? And now what we have to prove is that this is greater than or equal to this. 
And if you've done enough inequalities, you know that this quickly rewrites as a minus b plus b minus c, uh, a minus b squared plus b minus c squared plus c minus a squared. When you get rid of the square and you move everything on this side, it rewrites as a minus b squared plus da da da, -da is greater than or equal to zero. And this then proves the inequality. So how we would write this down is, so the way we write this down is we first say note that this from here we have this. Mind you, if you were reading this as a solution, you would be like, why are you even looking at this? But solutions are usually written with you knowing where the ending is. And then you just need to write the steps in, a, in the most concise way versus solving it is all over the place, right? You're sort of like, I'll try this and I'll try that. I'll try this. Here we tried the thing which ended up working. So what we do now from here, then we say, note from this, we have this, we call this two. And analogously, now we have this. And now we say, when we add, when we add inequalities two, three, four, we get also, like we say, call this left hand side, we get L is less than or equal to A over free ABC plus B over free ABC plus C over free ABC. And then this is equal to A plus B plus C over free times one over ABC. And now we see it, we could actually rewrite this as we have this, which is nine. So we'll call this inequality free greater than or equal to a plus b plus c. Or in other words, let's call this inequality, you know, this follows from this, and then let's call this one greater than or equal to a plus b plus c over free. And now we have a plus b plus c over free, and then we know by one, this is less than or equal to one times one over ABC, which is one over ABC. And now we have proved the inequality, though we still have to prove, we have to say, when does the equality hold? And this is actually where I lost points. So I think I said the equality holds for A equals B equals C equals one, and that was it. I lost one point there. Another point I lost because I had some uh, algebraic error where I switched up the signs accidentally at a plus where there was a minus but I corrected it later on so it didn't end up causing anything uh, it didn't end up causing any sort of incorrect proof or fallacious reasoning and I also think they didn't want me to have 40 out of 40 so they took away two points but that's another thing so I, I think this inequality thing is just important to note that we can say yes equality holds for a equals one 1a equals b equals c equals 1. But we need to say, why is that the only case when the equality holds true, right? And what we would say here, to have the equality for L to be equal to, call this R, for L to be equal to R, we must have equality here and here. Here we have equality if we have equality in 2, 3, 4. And for every single one of two, three, four, we have equality if and only if a is equal to b, b is equal to c. And in one, we have equality if and only if a is equal to b is equal to c. And so we see that we must, that we can have equality only if a is equal to b is equal to c. The condition makes it so that a must be then equal to one. And we also need to then check well, when they are equal to 1, 1, 1, we get 1 over 3, 1 over 3, 1 over 3 is less than or equal to what is equal to 1, which is an equality. So that's just a thing to keep in mind. It could be used in contests. You never know. You can just say, write a couple of words like, hey, we have to have equality here. We need to have equality in all these unequal things unequal signs, and to have them there, that force is A equal to B equal to C, and then we can check. Like, realistically speaking, you don't need to check if all of these inequalities 
are equal, but you never know. And it's two minutes that can be a point up or down, depending on who's grading you. So this finishes up our problem. And as always, thanks for problem solving.